Brian, you mentioned in last week's Q&A that some may sell off a pen to buy more. I'm a total newbie and would like to discuss the resale value of fountain pens. Which pens hold their value and can be resold and which pens may not resell well? It may tempt me to buy more if I knew that I could sell them if I wanted or needed to. Um, so reselling pens for this purpose is a little different than the capacity that I've talked uh, before. Um, you know, I did, I did talk about, kind of touched on this last week. In previous Q&As, I've talked about reselling pens more from like an investment strategy, of like buying a pen on the hopes that it will actually increase in value. That I really have never been that big of a fan of because it's so speculative. And honestly, the, the fountain pen market is so niche anyway. I'm not sure I would go that route. Some people do it and have done it successfully. That's fine. Um, the ones that would resell, see it's those ones though, it's like usually you're not using those. But you here you're talking about in this context, you're talking about a pen that you're actually going to want to use to try. If you didn't see the Q&A last week, I was talking about how some people like to narrow down their pens. They might buy a few pens really after using them for a while. They determine which ones they really love the most. And then they'll sell off the rest and only keep like three or four pens in their rotation. And then you, they're just kind of churning through some pens to get to the ones they really want. Um, part of that's a financial decision. Part of that is really just you got to try it after you buy it. I was going to say try before you buy, but that's not the situation here. It really takes you know a lot of using a pen to find which ones you really love because you got to use it with several different inks. You got to use it in a lot of different situations, different seasons, different you know methods of carrying it around so it it can especially since you're new you know you, you mentioned you're a newbie here it can take you a year or two before you really 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 have figured out kind of the three or four pens that you use the most and that's with kind of intentionally trying um, so I would say that it's not a process that you should rush necessarily and I wouldn't go buying a bunch of crazy pens just on speculation to do it. You should still buy your pens intentionally thinking, yeah, I'm probably really going to love this. But in the beginning, don't buy a lot of expensive pens. I've talked about that. Buy some less expensive ones because you need to determine which nib size you prefer. And do you like a pen with a metal grip or not? And do you like a heavy pen or a light pen? Do you like a thin pen or a thick pen? You got to figure that kind of stuff out. And it's better to do that on the cheaper end than it is to spend $150 or more to determine, yeah, I don't really like thick pens. You know what I mean? So in general, I would say when you're talking about reselling pens, none of it's really going to be like big money makers in terms of an investment. You're really just trying to recoup as much of your initial purchasing cost as you can. And there's several ways you can do this. You can look at the Fountain Pen Network has a marketplace that you can resell stuff. eBay is usually a pretty good place for Fountain Pen stuff. There's uh, a bunch of people that buy from there. Um, I'm not sure if the Fountain Pen Geeks has a selling part of their forum or not, but if so, that might be a good place. Or you may just kind of have some contacts or a pen show might be another place, though you're probably not going to get top dollar at a pen show. I would think that's probably like a last resort thing. I would think eBay or Fountain Pen Network, people that are, you know, um, not like pressured to, to buy it with a lot of other options. The problem with a pen show is you go to a pen show, there's tons and tons and tons of other pens there. So you tend to have to drive down your price a little bit to get people to actually take it. So um, I would say I may not be like the foremost authority on this because I have somewhat limited experience in reselling pens. Okay, so I should qualify that. Reselling used pens because I make my living from reselling pens that I buy from my manufacturers and then sell to you all, but that's not exactly the same as what we're talking about here. We're talking about used pens. Um, so if you're using a pen for a bit, it's gonna have wear and stuff like that possibly. There's just gonna be a hit that you're gonna take off the pen. Just like if you had a car and you was new and you drove it off the lot and now it's used and you're gonna take a hit in value. There's an initial hit in value that you're gonna take on any pen. So you wanna try and keep it in as good a condition as possible. And in general, I would say if you're buying a pen that's relatively inexpensive, 20 bucks or less, you're probably gonna have a hard time reselling it at all because just shipping costs and the hassle of you, you know people even dealing with it, they would probably rather just buy a new one and not have to get a reselled one. So you're gonna be pens at a certain price point before people are even gonna wanna buy it. And I would say generally the cheaper the pen is, the more of a deal people are gonna wanna get because there's gonna be kind of a fixed cost of somebody's time that they're gonna have to invest and the, the risk factor, if you will, of buying from someone they don't know 
you know, a, a cheaper pen like that, they may rather just buy it new. So it's probably gonna be pens in a little more expensive price range. Now, that's, that's not a blanket statement. I shouldn't say that altogether, but um, that's, that's how it is. So really just me qualifying that the used pen market is not really my thing. I haven't flipped a lot of pens on eBay or done a lot of pen shows or anything like that. So they're certainly put me in my place if I'm saying anything wrong. Those of you who are, are more experienced in this area and in general, just if you have tips. Um, I would say pens that tend to hold their value more are pens that are limited edition and or special editions. And I'm not talking like the super premium priced ones like this Visconti watermark I mentioned. That pen, you're probably not going to be able to resell at a premium unless there's just so limited you snag one up and use it for a while and the pen goes away for a long time and someone's really itching to buy it. But a pen that's in that price range, you're talking the $1,300 to $1,700 range. You know, that, that pen gets a little... A little risky to buy on speculation like that. Um, but pens that are lower in price that are special editions, I'm thinking like Lamy Safaris and All Stars and Studios and things like that, that have a really popular color, that there's somebody that's already collecting kind of a full range of it. That's usually a fairly safe buy in terms of, you know, you might have to wait a while until the color is discontinued to then really recoup the best value of it. But those ones, probably like Safaris would be kind of the exception of the uh, low, less expensive pen that people would probably be willing to pay for because of the collectability of it. So if you can get any of that collectability factor and the pen is in really good shape, you're probably gonna be uh, in great condition there. Um, yeah, that would be, by, be probably my best recommendation. And then really just sticking with well-known and respected brands that really hold up okay enough. If you get into the stuff that's really obscure, people are just not gonna trust necessarily. They already don't know you. And if they're buying a brand they're not really sure about, they're just gonna really want to get a deal in order to um, kind of take that risk. So sticking with something that's really well known that people can expect like, all right, I'm probably not gonna have any problems with this pen and something like that. Um, so I would say if it comes to uh, buying a pen uh, that you are intending to flip, eventually, or you know there's a prospect of flipping, stick with more of your mainstream stuff. Don't get anything too crazy, but if you can get a special or limited edition that you're not having to pay a premium for, that uh, is from, you know, kind of a well-known, well-collected thing, that's gonna be your safest bet. But other than that, just kind of go for what it is that you think you're actually going to use. Because if you're buying something and using a potential you know, intention of a higher resale value, that's probably gonna cloud your judgment into how much you would actually like the pen and use it. So if that's really your first goal is to get a pen you're gonna love the most, you might end up buying more pens you don't actually love just because you think you can sell it at a higher price. So don't let that cloud too much of your judgment.